What's up guys, welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 46, it's an awesome episode. Andrew and I play a meetup game out in Phoenix, Arizona at Wild Horse Pass Casino. Uh, first time we've taken a meetup game outside of Vegas. We got a huge turnout. I get into lots of interesting spots. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, if you guys want to come out to a meetup game in Vegas, uh, we're hosting one December 6th, Wednesday, at the Westgate Hotel. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Not sure if we're going to play 2-3 or 2-5 just yet. If you're coming from out of town or you plan on drinking a lot, we're going to have a promo code for uh, hotel reservations. I'll have that down in the description box, and it'll get you $50 a night for the hotel, which is a great price. Probably end up doing it myself. Um, a few more announcements. One is that we've been doing the vlog for a year, so... Wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but decided it'd be kind of cool to share with you guys my stats over the last 12 months. I do that at the end. Ends up taking quite a while. So that's why this vlog is so long. And uh, one last thing is that I've got Cosmo here. He's had a rough couple days, but uh, he's, uh, he's back home. He was at the ER. He had, a, he had kidney failure. He's acting kind of strange, so we took him to the vet. Vet didn't really see anything wrong with him physically, but took some blood tests, and his, his blood tests weren't, weren't very good, so uh, we rushed him to the ER. They hooked him up to an IV, which is why his arm here is all shaved, and uh, gave him some antibiotics. He recovered really quickly, and we got him back. Really glad to have him back, because um, obviously, you know, he's fun to hang out with, and... Uh, I don't know what I'd do without him on the vlog. I don't know what you do either. <laughs> okay, buddy. I'm obviously the talent. Yeah, I know. I know you're the talent. All right. And the smart one. So anyway. Oh, boy. You didn't, you didn't think you were the smart one, did you? <laughs> Whatever, man. Let's go ahead and get in there. It's episode. hilarious. Packed up the car. About to pick up Andrew. And then we're heading out to Arizona. Pass, and uh, we're about to get this game started. A few people are already there, so we're walking into the poker room now. We're gonna play. We're not even sure if we're gonna play three, five, or two, three yet. Might play a little bit of both. We walk into the poker room, and we're surprised to see so many people who are willing to come hang out, have some drinks, and play poker with us. Pretty awesome to meet the people who watch the vlogs. We shake hands and say hi to everyone, and I mean every. Okay, well, almost everybody. Sorry about that, Jameson. Didn't see you there. Andrew takes his seat at the table. I hop into a different one and buy into the 2-3 game for 700. In total, we get six additional games running that they wouldn't normally have on a Tuesday night. Here's a look at my opponents. Just for the record, everyone gave me permission to include them in the vlog. Okay, time to get into the action. In this hand, I have ace-jack offsuit in the cutoff. Player in middle position limps in. I raised a 15. The big blind calls and the limper calls as well. We go three ways to the flop. The dealer puts out ace-jack, three rainbow. We've got top two. Both players check. I put out a bet of 20, hoping to get a call by an ace-jack or maybe a gut shot straight draw. The opponents fold. We win it. Next, we get pocket kings in the hijack. The player on my right opens to 17. Terrific. I put in a three bet. I make it 55. Folds back to the initial pre-flop raiser. He looks like he wants to fold. Then he says that he wants to be on the vlog and tosses in calling chips. We're heads up. The flop comes. Jack 6-3 with two spades. The opponent checks. Nothing to be worried about here. I bet 45. After giving it some thought, the player calls. I'm hoping he has a jack. The turn comes out. It's another jack. I'm hoping he doesn't have a jack. He checks. It'll be tough to get three streets of value from a hand that's worse than mine, so I'm gonna check at least once. This seems like a good time to do so. I check back. The river is another six. The flush draw misses. 
Now my opponent bets 100. I've underwrapped my hand a little and perhaps look weak since I checked the turn. I can't fold given the way I played this hand so far and the fact that I'm getting 3 to 1 on a call. He might have floated me on the flop with a number of hands and decided to turn it into a bluff on the river. I call the bet. He's got queen jack of clubs, so he drilled the turn, rivered a boat, took me to value town, and made the vlog. Well done, Akil. Also, you're not invited to my birthday anymore, and it's going to be awesome, so you'll be missing out. Several orbits later, we get dealt ace-king offsuit under the gun and raise it to 15. It folds back to the big blind, who's a new player at our table. He calls. We're heads up. The flop comes out king 9-4 with two clubs. The big blind checks. I bet 15. He calls. The turn comes out. It's the 10 of diamonds. Now the big blind leads out for 45. Did he just drill straight, or does he have some kind of combo draw that he's turning into a semi-bluff? Not sure. I've got... Way too good at cards to let this go though, I call. The river is the ten of clubs, a lot of hands get there, the flush draw gets there, any gut shot on the flop either made a straight or made trips. The big blind bets 105, not really a good situation to be in. I'm really leaning towards folding because I don't see what I beat. Then I pause to look at my opponent, he looks extremely stiff and uncomfortable, his pulse is throbbing, these all appear to be indications that he's bluffing. I toss him a chip to call, he says I'm good, I turn over my hand, he mucks, later he told me that he turned a gut shot straight draw, here you can see he had a queen, not really sure what his other card was, I take down a nice pot for a 2-3 game. Next we decide we need to go to the moon, we're going to need some rockets to get there, oh, look what we've got here. There's a button straddle for 6, and the under the gun player raises to 25. Folds to me in middle position, I put in a 3 bet to 80, folds back to the under the gun player. He's not sure if he wants to come along or not at first, but eventually makes the call. The flop comes, jack 9-4 with two spades, player under the gun checks, I put out 95 hoping for a call. Unfortunately, I don't get one, the player lays his hand down, and we scoop the pot. We're about even for the night now, and we're having a great time drinking and hanging out with everybody. Played for a few hours, so it's time to switch the tables with Andrew in order to hopefully play with as many people as possible. I take a seat. Shortly after, I'm dealt pocket deuces on the button. The player under the gun opens to 11. I believe this player was Jameson, who was the guy that I didn't see extending his hand for the handshake when I first walked into the poker room. Anyway, I call the 11. We're heads up. The flop comes 10-10-5. The opponent checks. This is a good flop for deuces. I'm probably against two over cards once he checks the flop. I want to deny equity. I bet 10. The under the gun player makes the call. The turn is a 9. Player checks again. This is another good card if I put him on a hand like ace king or ace queen. This time I bet 20. He calls again and I don't have plans to bet a river unless it's another deuce. The river is a queen. The player checks. This isn't a great card. I check back. I'm surprised to see that the opponent has pocket aces. Apparently there's an aces crack promotion, so he played the hand differently than maybe he might have normally. The player then asked me if I think he played the hand okay. I have no other choice other than to be honest with him, and I tell him, I think you played it terribly. He obviously won the minimum. If he shoved the river, I'd have snap called him, and he'd be rolling in Bradley dollars. Just kidding. Played it great, Jameson. Now we've got a6 of hearts in the big blind, the button opens to 17. The small blind calls, I probably have the best hand and I have blockers with a suited ace. I don't want to call and play this hand out of position, I go for a 3 bet squeeze. I make it 90, the button folds, I'm thinking there's a good chance I just take this down preflop. The small blind has other ideas and makes the call. The good news is that we're in position and we've got an ace. The flop comes jack 10-5 with two diamonds, not a very good flop for us. Small blind checks, I put out a small C bet of 80, hoping that if he was set mining and he missed, he'll just give up. The small blind doesn't give up and he makes the call. The turn comes out, it's the four diamonds, flush draw gets there, he checks. I'm not trying to get too crazy here, I check back in case I'm up against a flush or a set. The river is the six of clubs, now the small blind puts out a bet of 300. I've got a pair and don't be too much, I have to fold. The opponent then shows king six of diamonds for the flush. We had him crushed pre-flop, unfortunately he turned the second nuts. 
this point, I add on to my stack. It's a 1500 cap, 2-3 game, and I've got 450 in front of me. There's some other big stacks now. I get another 500. In the last interesting hand, I pick up pocket sevens in the hijack. It's a straddle pot, folds to me. I raise to 25. The big blind calls, everyone else folds. The flop comes 6-5-3 with two diamonds. The big blind checks. I put out a bet of 20 with my over pair and a gut shot straight draw. The big blind calls. The turn is the six of clubs. The player checks. I check back. The river is the ten of spades. My opponent checks again. I'm most likely ahead. Not sure what I can get much value of if I bet big. I throw out 10, which is super small. The opponent calls and says your ace high is good. So I imagine he had something like king queen with a flush draw. That was it in terms of playing. It was a good time at the second table. Andrew crushed it at the first table that I was at. He just had piles of chips. Check out his vlog of the night if you haven't yet. I rack up for a little over a thousand. I was in for 1200, so I booked about a $200 loss. One of the coolest things about the night was that a lot of people drove in from all over Arizona and California to hang out. A guy named Tyler drove in from LA. This is Nick. He came all the way from San Diego. You just drove out here? Yeah, uh, once saw the vlog and I had to tell my supervisor I needed two days of vacation. And got awesome. in my car. Awesome, man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, no problem. Now that poker's over, it's time to get the after party started at a bar on the property. Here with uh, Larry, Plato Poker, poker vlogger, life vlogger. Yeah, lifestyle vlogger who plays poker. Yeah, so just ended the session, um, lost 200 bucks. How'd you do? I lost about that much too, about oh. 250. So. Okay, so we did great. <laughs> well, you guys seem to always win, but you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the main thing was just had a lot of fun. It was, how many people do you think showed up today? Oh, there was at least 75, probably. Think just, so? Probably from start to finish, there was about 75. Yeah, there's a ton of people, mo more than we've ever had at any other place uh, anywhere in Vegas and stuff. So it was really cool. Thanks a lot to everybody in Phoenix who showed up. We're uh, enjoying some drinks. Yes, we are. And uh, we'll catch up a little later. We had a great group of guys hang out with us until very late. We talked about poker and all kinds of other stuff. One of the best parts was just that everyone was really respectful of one another. Oh, are you filming? The next day was one of the highlights of the whole trip. We stayed at the Aloft Hotel near downtown Phoenix. It's a really nice property. They just renovated it. We were there for the hotel's grand reopening. They had a lot of good food and music. They also had a raffle with about 12 prizes. The prizes consisted of rounds of golf, free nights at the hotel, gift cards to steakhouses, and a variety of other things. All the money raised went to the United Way organization. I bought $100 worth of tickets initially, and so did Andrew. We then purchased an additional 20 each to get the total amount of money raised to be over 500. Andrew and I had around half the tickets in the raffle, and it went pretty good for us. All right, the Phoenix Brew Package is the one and only Brad Owen. There you go. Pretty good. Well done, Brad. Nice, Brad. Bronze tickets to the Nutcracker and one complimentary night here at the hotel, so it's a package date night. Here you know it, it's uh, Andrew and Amy. Well done, Andrew. Thank you. So, Got him. So this is a Tucson road trip. It's a one-night stay at the Hampton Inn in Tucson, which is our partner hotel owned by the same management that company that owns this hotel. A $25 shell gas card and uh, a plethora of road snacks. How about 150? Andrew Hey! <laughs> what do you know? This is for a uh, one day trip uh, to the Grand Canyon. They'll pick you up here, take you up to the Grand Canyon, bring you back, as well as a complimentary one night stay at the Alonco Hotel. So the last three are 100, which is like. Looks like Brad Owen. Hey, Brad Owen's going to the Grand Canyon. All right, this is for a complimentary foursome at Papago Golf Course, which is just down the street. The winner is... Let's see. One, two, two. Brad Owen. Hey, Brad Owen. Hey. Wow. Winner. Big winner, Brad. Oh, my God. <laughs> These guys are clean house. Five, eight now. <laughs> uh, same package, another 
another hundred dollar gift card to the Stockyard Steakhouse, and a complimentary one night stay here at the hotel. And the winner is one eight three. Mr. Brad. Congratulations. Thanks, man. This is actually one of our popular ones. This is a Prescott road trip. It's a one night stay at the Hacienda Inn up in Prescott Valley. A twenty-five dollar shell gas card and a plethora of road snacks. Last three are one seven six. That's Mr. Andrew Levy. Wow. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Hey, thanks to everybody for uh, coming out and participating. Uh, Andrew, thank you guys for your participation. The raffle went better than expected. We won seven out of the 12 prizes that day. All the money went to a good cause, and we now have a lot of gift cards for hotels, golf, steakhouses, and a few other things. We'll definitely be coming back to use them in Phoenix soon. That's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section, and I'll definitely get back to you. I want to give a big thanks to Wild Horse Pass for allowing us to host the meetup game out there. That was, that was awesome. Really, really cool uh, poker room, uh, really friendly staff. And uh, thanks to everybody who came out. That was one of the most fun things that I've done that's related to the vlog so far. We had no idea that that many people were gonna show up. People came in from all over Arizona, uh, San Diego, and LA. So thanks a lot to you know everybody for, for coming out um, and hanging out and drinking and playing poker with us. Uh, we've been doing the vlog for exactly a year now. I put out the first one December 2nd, 2016. It's December 2nd of 2017. And I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but uh, I figure it's a good idea to go ahead and show my stats. Um, I thought that like you guys would appreciate it. We hope you do. And uh, kind of gives a more complete picture of what it's like to be a professional poker player, even though that's not really what I am anymore. That's how I make most of my money, but I spend more time doing the videos by far. So let's go ahead and get into uh, the stats. First, I'll go over the cash game, and then I'll go over the tournament stats, and then I'll combine them. Um, first, I've won almost $41,000 playing cash over the last 12 months since I started the vlog, uh, making $59.30 an hour. That's a lot more than I made the previous year hourly. This year I started playing 510 more. I've been running really good and I've been playing a lot fewer hours so I can play when the games are better and I just go home and make a video when the games aren't as good. I've been making uh, on average $248 per session which means my average session is around four hours. Now this is something that I'm a little bit embarrassed about. I've only put in 690 hours over the last 12 months in cash games. Now, uh, that's mainly because I've been doing the vlogs. I've probably spent about 1,200 to 1,400 hours um, putting together the videos, so that doesn't leave a ton of time for poker. And I've cashed in 70% of the sessions, or I've, I've won money in 70% of the sessions that I play, so that's pretty typical. Usually, a uh, professional poker player will win somewhere between 60 and 70%. So I'm on the high end, ma mainly because, um, I mean, it's mainly because I'm playing in easier games. I hate losing. Uh, I'm much more likely to stay and play for a long period of time when I'm losing, just so I can book a win. So some of my wins aren't that big. And I also play fairly tight. Uh, so, I mean, there's not really gonna be a lot of sessions um, where I'm where I'm losing unless I'm kind of running bad. Um, I'm winning 9.82 big blinds per hour. That's good. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and look at the locations that I played at. So I spend most of my time at the Red Rock. That's where I've made the most money. Usually playing in two five games. Sometimes they're uh, two five ten games. And then Bellagio is where I've made the second most amount of money, probably where I spend um, the second most amount of time. And I've just I've run really really good in the 510 game there. Haven't uh, haven't had too many big losing sessions. I had one where I lost 3k. That was the biggest losing session that I've had all year. And I made uh, a vlog about that with Check Raise Charles. You can check that out. It's called I think it's called the Bonus Vlog. Um, all right, yeah, there's not really too much to look at 
in terms of the locations. Down at the bottom, you have all the locations that I'm a loser at. That includes the Rio, Thunder Valley. I don't know if you remember those vlogs in, I think, March. Um, covered those. Chumash, that was the Santa Barbara one. And then this, this episode I lost at Wild Horse Pass. All right, let's go. Let's look at the different stakes. In 2-5, I win $46 an hour. Uh, pretty good. In 5-10, I'm winning almost two twenty an hour, which is definitely not sustainable. I actually don't play that many hours of 5-10, but uh, I'm starting to a little bit more. It looks like I've played maybe like 8% of my sessions were 5-10 so far. And that includes when I went and played live at the bike. I won, I had a 5K session, so that obviously helps a lot. Uh, if you look at 1020, I've only played one session for an hour. That's why the hourly is $1,405. Obviously not sustainable for me either. That was a free roll. I covered that uh, one session that I played um, on one of the vlogs. It says like the highest I've ever played or something. Now in 1-2, I've played 20 something hours, almost 30 hours. And I win $4.80 three or 84 cents per hour. Uh, haven't really played that many hours and I've had some losing sessions, I guess. And in one three, I'm actually a loser. I'm losing $44 an hour almost. The only sessions of one three that I played were for this vlog, this episode. And then also when we played Stones Live for the vloggers game back in July, I think. Um, that was a 1-3 session, but it played more like, almost like a 5-10 game, definitely more like a 2-5 game. So those are the only two sessions that I played of 1-3 or 2-3. I lumped them both in the same category. All right, let's go through the weekdays. Nothing really that interesting. Looks like Tuesday I win the most money, and then I go out and celebrate too much and play Wednesday hungover and lose it all back. <laughs> No, not quite. But losing, I guess I, I'm a loser on Wednesday for this year. Uh, kind of interesting. And then Thursday looks like a pretty good day to play. Okay. And then let's go by month. I actually covered my stats for January and February in a different vlog. Um, January was my best month of the year. And then February was the worst month of the year. Uh, I had two losing months. Altogether in the last 12 months, um, March, April, May, June, and July, I really, I hardly won any money during that period of time. From from February to July, I hardly won anything, and that's frustrating. You're gonna go through streaks where you just don't win much, and there's not really that much you can do. You're either card dead or running bad, and then I pick it up in August. The last the last uh, four months have been awesome for me. Um, didn't really play that many hours. I was more focused on doing videos and traveling, but August was a pretty good month, making 74 an hour. September, October, and November, I did great, uh, making $146 an hour in September. I hardly had any losing sessions that month, and that's when I played the 1020 session and uh, played some 510 in there. October, uh, did well in that 6749 figure that I played uh, the live of the bike and won um, about 5,200. Uh, and November did really well, just hardly played any hours. And December, this is from December of last year. I haven't played any sessions from December this year, but I made 48 an hour. All right, now let's look into the tournament section. This is the report. I've lost $4,633. Over the last 12 months playing tournaments, negative $46 an hour. On average, I lose $579 per tournament that I play. Uh, I've only played, I, I played eight tournaments. I've only cashed in one of them. That was the Monster Stack. That was a really cool series of videos. If you haven't checked that out, uh, you should probably do that. Um, and let's see, my ROI is negative 65%. Obviously, this is a really small sample size. Can look at uh, let's see here. All right, we can break it down by month, and then 
Also, let's just go ahead and look at all the sessions from it. So starting at the top, that's the main event. I had 3,000, I put in $3,450 of my own money. The rest of it, I had people uh, back me. And then right below that is the Monster Sack, the only event that I cashed in. I uh, didn't have all of myself. I was crushed by a poker put me in and I got to keep 50% of my winnings after I paid back the $1,500 buy-in. So if I lost it, then I wouldn't have to cover the buy-in. Below that is the tag team event. And then the $0, that is for the, uh, that's for the Colossus. That was a free roll. The guys, 9to5poker.com put me into that one and I didn't cash in it. So I didn't lose any of my own money, but I guess if, I guess it kind of skews the results a little bit, so I should have lost uh, $500 more, sort of. Um, now in the Venetian tournaments, lost 400, uh, playing in Hollywood, yeah. So you can see, didn't do too well in the tournaments this year, that's how it goes. Cashing in one of eight, isn't that, isn't that bad? Bubbled a lot of them, bubbled uh, playing in Hollywood, bubbled um, the main event, so if I cash the main event, then these stats are gonna look a lot different. Okay, now let's look at all of them combined. I've won $36,300 for the year. Um, won about $59 per hour playing cash, but lost, uh, let's see how much did I lose in cash. I think I lost, yeah, $46 an hour playing tournaments. Didn't play as many tournaments as I did in cash, thank God, otherwise I wouldn't have any money. So uh, put it together and I've, I've won almost $46 an hour throughout the last 12 months. Um, played 790 hours with combined cash and tournaments and I, ca and I won money in 67% of my sessions. That bankroll number isn't accurate at all at the bottom, so don't mind that. Uh, anyway, Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you enjoyed going through the stats. This has gotten really long. I didn't anticipate uh, spending like 11 and a half minutes on this outro, but hope you guys appreciate it. Um, not really spending that many that much time playing poker these days. I spend a lot more time doing the vlogs. Uh, I make about $10 an hour doing the vlogs, which isn't great, but I really enjoy doing it. I like all the interaction with you guys and it's been a lot of fun so far. So thanks a lot for coming along with me over the last year, and I hope we continue to do it for a long time. That's it for this episode. See you guys next time. Good luck at the tables.